Hey there, this is a quick tip clip for my Making Comics students, and uh, I was going to just upload it to Blogger, uh, but Blogger won't let me because the video is too big, so I'm going to add this little opening bit uh, and just use YouTube, and all of you can watch it too. Uh, I teach Making Comics at Sin Studio, but you can also sign up with Patreon and get more or less similar instruction through uh, my Patreon, uh, student patron category. Um, and yeah, if you ever hit writer's block, these are a few tips about how to break that. Hi class. So I wanted to do a little video note on something that I wanted to bring up in class but then forgot to. I, was, I mentioned, uh, you know, try to think about how to, what to do with uh, writer's block or if you're stuck for ideas. And uh, someone asked in class about uh, how I keep track of things and I mentioned I, I sort of write down notes in, in my notebook so I have some examples of that here. Um, this is my my current new notebook. I have to switch to up close shot here. So this is my current working notebook, and then I also have uh, some smaller um, some smaller notebooks here. And these are all dot grid notebooks. So I have things in here like my my thumbnail work. Let's go to the overhead cam. Oops, not that one. This one. There we go. So you can see I've thumbnail roughs. But I also do some writing in these. Um, I think a good one to show you would be so you go so when it goes back and forth. There's some writing in that one. Um, yeah, so these are thumbnails for story that I started writing in this notebook, and it began with a uh, had a, an anthology that asked me if I want to contribute a story. It's called Letters to Montreal, which got published. And um, so I was thinking about like letters to Montreal and themes came up and I recently been uh, paying a lot of attention to First Nation issues and stuff like that. And it's just an idea, a thing that I was aware of for a while, but it's come up a lot in our culture recently. And uh, my wife does, um, she works at a theater and they've been doing land acknowledgements at the beginning of theaters. And just looking at like issues around affordability where I live and stuff like that. So I decided to do this story called Acknowledgements and I ended up writing a uh, piece of poetry. Actually, I think this is I wrote first, and then there's like points of things in history that I wanted to write about, and then I wrote a piece of rough poetry around it, um, and then I did thumbnails. Um, so that's often in the story ideas come from prompts like that, but um, sometimes you're just sort of stuck, and especially with these short strips, you might be uh, want to look for a quick way to generate a notion. Uh, of course, the easy thing is to just sort of pull something from your day or whatever, but I have got here a couple of other ideas. So I mentioned these in the blog and I'll point out where, but the first thing I'm going to show you is sort of a fun thing. Now, I've gone and actually bought these cubes. These are called Rory Story Cubes, and they're like dice. And then you take them, and the idea for the game is that you. Uh, you take turns and you roll some dice and you can say let me just look at what the images I have here are they come in different sets laundry and a die all right so our character hmm it looks like they're I do something blind and yeah. okay so our character Dave needs to get into a safe and he finds that he can't figure out what the combination is he tried using dice to randomly generate them he tried feeling blind seeing if he could just tell what it was but it just exhausted him. And he had to get his laundry done. So he ate an apple and decided to drop the whole thing and go play football instead. <laughs> so that's really simple. Um, and the idea is that you would roll the dice again and come up with another story. And then when you're your players get to vote at the end who had the most interesting stories, and that's how you win the game. But for a writer, you can sort of use these prompts. You can add more dice if it helps to throw more variables in there and come up with ideas. Now, 
I like these just as a fun device. Um, it's also a fun game to play. But, you know, I, I got given the first set by, as a present, and then I got hooked on them and went around buying sets of them. But part of the reason I like these is that, um, for you guys, is that you don't really need the dice. So, uh, let me see here. I've, I'm, I've uh, linked to a couple of options for them. So the actual manufacturer makes an app, and it has a nice little visualization. You get, uh, potentially, I think it's two sets of dice. Let's see here. Yes, original and clues for free. And then you can buy other sets of virtual dice. And they're not too expensive. It's a cheap way to, to get these if you if you happen to, to uh, like. And here you can control how many dice you use. Um, but there's also a number of uh, imitators. So this one, Story Dice, is pretty good because you can actually literally shake the app. I think this one also does, yeah, you can use the button and shake the app that way. And that's fun. Um, I think, was there? Yeah, you can. Control this, so add a couple of those, and then that changes up the, the kind of dice you have to play with. And that's very effective. It's a free app. I think you get the, the little ad at the top. Um, and then there's a couple of other knockoff ones. There's one other that I thought was decent. Um, hmm. uh, story. There it is. Uh, this one. And it's not quite as cool with the animation, but you know, you can up to 16 dice and just hit them. And it's a prompt. It's just a way to think up of a pattern of ideas. Um, those are pretty simple gamified ways of doing it. And I've linked to the, the free apps, both for the, a couple for on the Apple store and a couple on the, the Android store. I, I use a, an Android, so that would work better for me. Um, I will show you here. We've got, uh, is it this one? Yes. So here on the blog, I've got under tools for braiding Riker's block. So the last thing I mentioned are the apps, Rory, Rory, Rory Story Cubes, and there's some links here for, for those. Now, another thing that you might want to look at is the Brian Eno's Oblique Strategies. So I think I write, uh, I wrote, I linked here to the Wikipedia article that explains what they are, right? So there's a little bit of history here about them, but then there's also a link to a website. And so the site, uh, it basically just, you just refresh it, hit refresh, and it changes up what thing. And, and, the, and the cards are just sort of prompts. So Eno's a musician, and they were just trying to think of things that when you're trying to figure out what to do, here's a suggestion. When you want to externalize the decision-making process, that's what the dice do as well. They basically externalize the decision-making process. If you're feeling stuck or you just want a cue, and even, it can even be something to react against. You may not use what the dice tell you, but it'll give you ideas about what you could do instead. Um, so here it's lowest common denominator, whatever that is. It's very contextual. Uh, bridges build burn so build a bridge to a new idea burn a bridge uh, destroy a piece of thing or something you know give the game away you uh, one of the things about the these big strategy ones is you you interpret them contextually so you will it really depends on what the, the thing you're working on is if it's a comic strip so give the game away how about start at the beginning of the story sorry start the story at the end of the story at the first panel what happens at the end the game away and then figure out how to get there. Uh, repetition is a form of change. They're weird oblique statements. Make a blank value make a blank valuable by putting it in an exquisite frame. Interesting idea. Um, repetition is a form of change. We just saw that. That's clever. Just carry on. <laughs> and you know, be dirty. These aren't always going to help you, but you can keep hitting refresh until something strikes you. And that's, again, another externalized way of prompting yourself and thinking about what to do. Now, uh, the last thing I'm going to mention is, let's go back here to the blog. Yes, is at the first thing I mentioned here is writing the thinkable with Linda Berry. Now, this is a link to a YouTube video. I think, uh, the right 
<laughs> so she's behind a piece of plexiglass here and she she tells us um walks us through this whole writing process it's about a 20 minute yeah it's a 20 minute writing exercise she uses it to start all her comics um and the first thing she's doing here is just a meditative exercise she spends a couple minutes drawing a spiral and that's mostly just to sort of center yourself and get the noise out of your head and then she goes through a whole process of constraints that well she'll draw a piece of paper to sort of configure and shape her space and then just start writing notes on it and she she gives you prompts like you're in a car what kind of car is it what are the seats like where are you parked what's the weather like are the windows open or are they closed what color is the car and answering those questions writing them down you start building a context and it keeps going from there like you, you'll mention actions and smells and all sorts of stuff now she has a particular set that she goes through for writing the unthinkable but you can take what she does in writing the unthinkable and transpose it and give yourself a different set of questions and constraints um, and again mainly what you're doing is creating prompts for you to make choices from so it's not as externalizing you're actually internally making those decisions this time but you're creating structure or a framework for how to do things. So this is similar to me saying like you could use haikus and that gives you a constraint over word usage um, and making it a journal comic that's so you pick something from your day, right? These are just some more tools like that. I wanted to mention this in class to you know add to the list of things you could try, but I forgot to probably bring up in class. So I made this short video to just reemphasize and point them out. I'm gonna repost the links that were in the, the big post uh, along with this video and just suggestions for uh, things to just change things up when you're thinking of new stories this week. That's all. So hope you're having fun, and I look forward to seeing what you guys do. Uh, I'm going to record some more videos and notes for you guys and post them separately, but this goes up right away. See you later.